So there are multiple different theories on criminality that are often presented by the media, by the left-wing media, and one of the main ones is this idea that all criminals are Aladdin. They're all just thieves with a heart of gold, they've fallen on some tough times, and they're just one magic genie away from showing you what a great guy that they actually are. Then there's reality, then there's the things that I present on this channel, which is the fact that thieves are people who are not following the rules of our society, they are dangerous people, they are driving areas into poverty, and if you allow them to go unchallenged, they will continually escalate their poor behavior until the point where people get hurt. Unlike what is put forward by the left wing, what I say is backed up by reality. What we often see is that the same thieves over and over again are the ones being arrested for a disproportionately high number of the crimes. We've also talked about organized retail theft, where again, due to lax rules on this particular types of crimes, organized crime has moved into these areas and what these people are doing is making a ton of money selling these products on a secondary market while at the same time driving the stores out of business, driving areas into poverty, and making our societies overall much, much worse. Well, a new trend in Sacramento, a new style of robbery, should really go to show you their absolute disregard for human life and for other people. Because now, one of the things that these people are doing in order to steal more expensive items is setting fires in one part of the store in order to distract store employees, so that way they can get away with theft of more expensive items that there might be more security associated with normally that they would not be able to get out the store without such distractions and that's what we're going to talk about today but before we get into that thank you so much to everybody who signed up over on actualjusticeword.com slash join you get early access to videos via the secret video page it's great i appreciate you oh, give me the money give you give me the money Okay. And thank you to everybody who's listening on Apple, Spotify, and Google's podcasting platform. Let's go. But first, fiery fake out. The new Lowe's retail thieves are stooping to as they set their eyes on the merch and set fire to the stores they target. So the local news opens up with some surveillance video of a fire being set. I believe this fire is actually in a Target. Now, I know a lot of you not in favor of the targets because of the prides and whatnot. But let's set that aside for a moment and point out that whatever you think about the children's section in Target, setting a fire to that children's section is not a good thing to do when you're trying to steal TVs or whatever from the electronics section. And that is one of the new trends that we're seeing in the city of Sacramento. Live outside of Midtown Target, closed for weeks because of a fire, are shoppers at risk when they reopen Madison? Right, that's the question that we asked. You know, when you see a fence up around the opening doors of a Target, you don't expect it. This one has been closed for nearly a week. So it's very notable to me that the store is fenced up. It's completely closed because they have to clear out the fire damage. Because not only do these thieves only think of themselves, only think of the retail items that they want to steal, but they don't think about the average everyday people. And you guys can say whatever you want about Target, about Walmart, about any of these big box stores. But in reality, people like me probably shouldn't be talking crap about people who are so dependent on those low prices, on the thin margins of profit that Target and Walmart make in order to deliver those low prices to the consumers. Because while I might be able to afford to shop somewhere else, while some of you might be able to afford to shop somewhere else, in reality, in actuality, people need those prices, especially in this inflationary environment, in order to make ends meet. So you shutting down the store completely for weeks weeks and weeks, you putting people out of work completely for weeks and weeks in order to steal some TVs, some toasters, whatever you think will have resale value is absolutely disgusting and repugnant behavior. And it's expected to be closed for the next few weeks as they work to fix what damage that fire left behind. And tonight, I can be the first to report that a suspect possibly linked to starting this fire has been arrested and they could face more than arson charges. And of course, it disproportionately affects the poorest among us. And and again, if this becomes a trend, people who own businesses in these areas are going to have to start getting fire insurance in order to compensate and not just fire insurance that covers accidental or electrical fires or anything like that, but stuff that covers arson. That means the rates are going to go up. That means prices are going to go up. Big businesses are going to move out. The small businesses are going to have the squeeze put on them, not to mention the fact that it's inherently dangerous to set fires in these stores because there's other people in there. It seems incredibly organized and frightening, <laughs> like 
frightening. Cell phone video from inside a Target on J Street in Sacramento is similar to surveillance footage taken in a Citrus Heights Target weeks before. I'm shook. So again, people are surprised that this is so organized. They're surprised that this is so brazen. They're surprised at the utter disregard for human life and for human safety. As you saw, there was a woman walking with a baby in a stroller nearby where one of these fires were set. But the thing is, you shouldn't be surprised. You shouldn't be shocked. This is the natural escalation to what happens when you allow lawlessness to run rampant. California has gone soft on shoplifting. They're not prosecuting them to the fullest extent of the law. They've raised the amounts that you can be charged with a felony for. So people are obviously thinking of all of these different ways that they can steal. When theft goes up to a certain point, stores end up having to take some kind of security measures. But because there's no criminal consequences, because these repeat offenders keep getting off time and time again, and now it's become the avenue of organized crime to make money in this way, they're not just going to give that up without a fight. So now we're in a scenario where they're trying to create distractions, and it's not just talking to a store employee or anything like that. Flames rise up from the children's section, put out within three minutes. Smoke and fire just feet from a family shopping with a child in a stroller. They started a fire in the paper towel aisle and then they loaded up their cart with all kinds of school supplies and clothes and just walked right out of the store. A dangerous distraction for thieves to shoplift from big box stores. They're making these stores more and more dangerous with the distraction of setting fires and there's smoke inhalation issues. People could end up getting hurt, burned, die from this. And this is not the way that you want to have a society function. All we would have to do is incarcerate these people for shoplifting, punish them, give them serious consequences, and this would be deterred. But instead, time and time again, we hear about these people being the victims. It's not not the woman who's carrying her baby in the stroller nearby who has to deal with smoke inhalation that we should be concerned about. It's that woman that's setting a fire on video just so they could steal whatever the hell they damn well please. This is organized crime where people come in, they have a premeditated plan, they know exactly what they're going to do. In a Southern California Dollar Tree, cell phone video shows a little girl cover her mouth from fumes. So right here we see a kid covering her face because of the fumes that are coming off of the plastics and all the stuff that's being set on fire so these thieves can do whatever they want. Again, think about the people who shop at Dollar Tree. These are not wealthy people. These are not people who have a lot of excess capital to expend. So when this store goes out of commission, they're going to be hurt by it. And also the danger of this. People bring their families to these stores. What if they set this fire in the wrong place and somebody gets trapped in the store? Is it worth killing somebody in order to not acknowledge the reality that shoplifting is a problem in the United States of America? Are we still going to say that they were just trying to feed their families by setting the store on fire when kids are burning up when they're dying of smoke inhalation is that really what we're going to do we're just going to continually ignore this it's insanity as flames start to burn up one of the shelves last month the bad guys may avoid a felony by stealing less than 950 dollars but what about setting a fire Look at this store. Look at the state of this Dollar Tree. Look at how bad they were at containing this blaze. This thing torched up. There are other buildings in this complex. If you're running a business nearby, maybe you say Dollar Tree, heartless corporation. Hate them. Hate them for no reason. I, I don't like them. Well, guess what? There are other stores in this complex. There are small businesses, all of that. They could get caught up in the blaze. Any number of people can be hurt by this. I don't know about this for sure, but I know certain dollar stores actually have propane tanks in one part of the store. This blaze got out of control obviously it is on fire at night this thing started during the daytime they completely lost the ability to contain it so how many people are going to get hurt so you can get your tv how many people are going to get hurt so you could get your school supplies your laundry detergent so you could resale that on the secondary market how many times does this have to happen before we say this is a problem this is a danger how many escalations do we have to see how many people do we have to see get shot when they try to confront these shoplifters before we acknowledge these are dangerous bad people People. They're not innocent angels. They're not Aladdins. They're not expressing their kindness and love out of desperation. They're violating the rules of our society. These are people that would rather destroy than create. And we see their destruction when left unchecked reaches orders of magnitude people could have never imagined. Selfishness in that form that you would be so hateful towards not just yourself to destruct someone else's property, but to other people in that area who are worried about maybe what if their kid like got hurt from that look this is crazy this is madness 
This is something that we should all be concerned about, and this is something we should fight back against. The idea that we let the left control the narrative in this regard, that these people are innocent angels, and we just look away from the rampant criminality as it progresses, as it escalates, I'm not about that. I'm going to fight back against it. I'm going to highlight these stories until we get some change. Remember, retail theft used to be a huge problem in the United States of America. Then we started prosecuting retail criminals, and guess what? It went down. Stores started working together. They started coordinating sharing information on thieves and guess what it went down and we prospered because of this you cannot have people invest in an area if their investments are just going to get stolen at the drop of a hat and again i've said this a million times on this channel Crime is driving the poverty, not the other way around, because when these stores vanish, when we get crappier replacements, when prices go up, when people lose their jobs, when all of the stores in a certain area are burned out from these criminals, that's going to drive down property values. People are going to have to pay more expensive prices. New businesses are going to have to pay higher insurance premiums. All of these things compile on one another to create economic devastation. We need to push back against it. We need to stop pretending it's a non-problem and address it head on but hey those are just my thoughts let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you like this video show them by leaving a like subscribe for more content follow me on all my social media support me via the support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about how crazy things are getting in california till next time